Praise the Lord. This is marital talk for you. We shall be talking on oneness in marriage. And our anchor of scripture is Psalm 133, verse 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. To dwell together in unities. Oneness is a step higher than togetherness. Togetherness involves doing physical things together. But oneness involves becoming one spirit, one soul, and one body. Having the same mind, minding the same thing, thinking together, planning together, having the same goal, aspiration, perspiration, and vision. Praise the Lord. During wedding, we join many hands together, but with mind far apart. And this has caused a lot of problem in our society today. I want us to think deeply and to be ready to be in unity, to invite the spirit of oneness into our marriage, into our family. Oneness has many advantages. Number one is that it enhances good marriage. It makes your family, your home, a paradise on heart. It builds a good prayer life. You have a strong prayer life without any obstruction, without any obstacle. Your spirit, your mind can freely flow when you are praying because you have a real prayer partner that contributes to the success of your spiritual life. It breeds peace of mind. It leads to progress and prosperity. If one can conquer a thousand and two will conquer ten thousand, you know that you have progress all through. A speedy progress when we have the spirit of oneness in our marriage. It enhances good training for the children, thereby bringing up godly children. If your family <clears throat> is void of quarreling, is void of disturbance, is void of battle, you should be rest assured that bringing up of godly children will be easier for you. And that's the work of oneness. It removes third party from your marriage. It encourages good communication. You speak in truth, in love, without any barrier. It promotes good health for your life. When there is love, when you are in unity, your blood pressure will never rise. And uh, it yields better results for your work and labor. It brings out long-lasting marriage and it enhances intimacy, romance, and sexual life. And that is the reason why we need to look at it critically. What can we do to promote oneness in our marriage? Number one, accept your partner as he or she is. Don't compare your partner to anybody. Don't compare your partner to your friend's partner. Accept he or she as he is. And that is why when we look at Romans chapter 15 verse 7, 
It says, Therefore receive one another, just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Accept one another as Christ accepts us. It's very, very important. If is weak, that is why God give you the grace to be his partner so that you can complement, you can complete him so that that weakness, your own strength will complement it. If it's not financially buoyant and God give you the grace to be financially buoyant, that's the reason why God call you the help meet. So accept your partner. Never allow any third party to come between you and your spouse, irrespective of who he, he or who she is. It may be your intimate friends. It may be your father. It may be your mother. It may be your pastor. Never allow any third party to come between you and your spouse. And how do we beat oneness in marriage again? Forgive your spouse no matter the degree of offense committed. No matter what he or she does, you should learn how to forgive and forget. Number five, where we stop today, be open to your spouse without any consideration. Be open. Be open. Be open to him physically. Be open to him or her spiritually. Your fear, mentally be open to her or him. Be open to him or her financially. Let everything be according to the will of God in your family. And it shall be well with you. This is Marita Talk for you from Pastor Lucian of Fumio Dediron. See you next time as we continue in the series 2 of this Oneness in Marriage. God bless you in Jesus' name. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Telegram and Facebook for more and uh, former teaching. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen.